I'm going to skip Brassicas right now, and we'll go on to Alliums. which is your onions, charlic, uh, shallots, garlic, leeks, and chives. The onions were spectacular this year. I grew just a few candy onions from seed, and then I planted the seedlings out into the garden, and I planted in the shade along the north side of the house. She put those starts into the flower bed. Right. And now, it's, I, it's an armored flower bed, so the, the, the critters can't get it. And that's why they were there is... For two reasons. One is it's armored so that <clears throat> gophers would not come up underneath and eat them. And eat them. And the other reason was it was in the shade. Because although onions certainly can tolerate the heat and stuff, the amount of moisture that they need, it's hard to do sometimes out in the main garden. So I just literally stuck them in along there and I wound up with absolutely gorgeous onions like that. They're great. They're just a ma magnificent and quite a few of them. I mean, it'll last us for quite a while. And then I did the leeks. We're okay. The last of the leeks were actually eaten by the deer. So we did not get a full eat leek harvest. But I still have a few in the refrigerator. And we need to make a good cockaliki soup or something like that. I would definitely, you know, that was pretty successful. The garlic bed needs to be rebuilt. I have fresh garlic where we need to plant. We just have... Last couple of weeks have been a disaster. So I need to choose a bed. We need to till it up, amend it, and plant the garlic. We Because we have elephant garlic to plant. Um, I'm growing onion seedlings right now. I'm going to pot them up into the greenhouse. I'm not even going to try and put anything out in the garden this fall because of the deer. Yeah, the, the, the deer are suffering greatly here because of... That's yeah, this one. It's either too hot or it's run out of juice. Probably out of juice. I'm going to risk relying on the other one. <laughs> you know, we'll, just, we'll just do the alliums. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's all there is to talk about is, is the, because uh, I, I grew onions and garlic and leeks. I have chives. They, they, they're sort of endemic in the yard. There's a couple of spots where the chives, I have to clean some of them out this year because I really want to repot my uh, rows. Roses, which have which are full of chives, um, but the garlic that we have, our old garlic bed, uh, has yielded quite a bit of garlic, but it needs to be completely stripped out and rebuilt. Garlic scapes are great. I love garlic scapes in the spring. It's one of the earliest vegetables you get. They're normally up even before asparagus, and actually, uh, garlic scapes with with asparagus are delicious too. We did that once this past spring. Just a little light stir fry with uh, with an olive oil. Everything in the alley and family is a really heavy feeder. Yep. So one of the things that we have to do is we're going to look at how much additional nutrition we need to put into the bed that we're going to be planting the alliums in. Right. Uh, they. Uh, I have some good organic slow release. And the problem is you need to um, till something like that in before you plant them. And then when they start really doing okay and you're getting some nice like when you, if you planted garlic bulbs for instance you'll see the shoots coming up once the shoots are starting to come up uh we're going to spoon feed them with a 20 20 20 probably hit them once a week with that until it's t you know until they they're pretty much done and then you could with onions you stop at a certain point when they go from vegetative production to bulb production you can slow down on your nitrogen one of the things people don't realize is how much nitrogen all of the alliums take in order to do well. We're back. Lunch was good. <laughs> yes, that's a good thing. And we needed to take a break. It was going a little longer than we expected earlier. Well, there's actually we actually grow a really wide variety of stuff in our garden. Uh, probably wider than we thought about before we actually started writing it down. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we finished up the alliums. Right. And now it's on to the grasses. How many grasses did we grow? Just one. Uh, we'd actually planned to grow two, but we now we got around to the second one. Uh, grasses includes corn, wheat, barley, sorghum, Sudan grass, millet, oats, and sugarcane. Yeah, now the reason why we didn't grow the sorghum Sudan grass, which 
we had the seed for was because we didn't have... We never got our, monsoon. Yeah, we didn't have our <laughs> monsoons earlier in the year. And then once it got warm and the ground was warm enough for that seed to sprout, we just decided with the water issues we were having that we weren't going to go spend the water spreading yeah. it on the ground to sprout that seed. Yeah, our goal was actually to try and improve the soil, experiment with improving the soil in one little section of the yard just to see what would happen. And we did grow two beds full of corn. We grew one bed full of sweet corn, and we grew one bed full of dent corn. Now, dent corn is what you normally make cornmeal and stuff like that out of. Both seeds up came, came up very well. We fertilized enough. We simply could not water enough. We actually had problems. That was during the time frame with the first batch that we were actually having problems with water delivery. Now, we had one other problem, we think, with, with the sweet corn. And that is we didn't get good pollination. And the reason we didn't is it was simply so intensely hot. Corn does have limitations in terms of how hot it can be. And if it gets consistently, and we were consistently up around 104 degrees for days and days and days and days. Right when the right, right when the pollen should have been happening. But what we got was actually it pretty was, darn good. It was good. good. It was good. Um, not the favorite corn I've ever grown. No. But, uh, but it was good and definitely worth growing. The dent corn was another experiment. That came closer to success. We ate a bunch of sweet corn. We also ate dent corn. You could eat dent corn as long as you like... Pick it and Pick boil it. it. and boil it right away. It doesn't right. hold in the fridge. Amaranth. Amaranth. We had one amaranth that we grew this year, which is red callaloo. It was a gift from... Essie uh, Family Gardener. Essie on Family Gardener. Uh, and it grew beautifully. It was just gorgeous. It grew these huge, like, four-foot-tall plants with these monster plumes of amaranth seeds on the top. And we really did not care for the flavor that much. Yeah, we grew it specifically for the leaves. Right. It's it's a gorgeous red color. And red is so unusual in the garden that it's always very exciting when you get something that's a different color. Our big concern was we were watching those plumes because we did not want them to go to seed because it grew. Amaranth can be a weed. We have wild amaranth that grows around here pretty much without any assistance from humankind. So... It can become invasive, and we were really concerned. But as it turned out, just about when we were concerned about needing to cut the plumes off so that we wouldn't get We had help. We had help. The deer thought it was really tasty, and they chomped out the top of it, and we just said, okay, that was just meant to be. (laughs) Now, we're not going to grow the red kylaloo, or we're not planning to grow it. We're not planning to grow it next year. Um, So we're going to grow a different amaranth, though. Yeah, but we'll probably just grow celosia, which is a different amaranth. They're flowers. Uh, except for the fact that there are other things that we grow in the greenhouse. Um, because amaranth also include the beets and chard, uh, you know, and, and Swiss chard and spinach and lamb's quarters. My plan is to plant spinach probably within the next week or so in the, in the greenhouse. We had Swiss chard in the yard. We also had Swiss chard in the greenhouse. I may put some more in the greenhouse again. Even just a small patch that's, you know, like that big is enough to provide. And we eat our leaves small. We will be growing uh, spinach for sure. We have to decide if you'd like some beets this winter, then I'll plant a batch of them too. The nice thing about beets and some other things like that that we tend to grow in the winter is they hold for longer periods of time. Right. So you're not on this tiny little narrow window of when you can harvest it. Well, you're not big on beets to begin with. Oh, I don't like beets at all. <laughs> they taste terrible to me. They taste like dirt. That takes care of the amaranths. Um, umbrella firs we did have in the garden. That includes uh, carrots, parsley, parsnips, parsley, parsley, cilantro, cilantro, and dill. But the dill is really terrific. The dill was a very good thing this summer. Unfortunately, when the once the deer got in, they really liked it too. They liked they the ate dill. Ate it down to the ground. So I actually have some seedlings right now in the dining room, and I'm debating where I'm going to keep them, whether I'm going to keep them in the house or whether I'm going to ship them out to the greenhouse. We'll see. Parsnips we had early on in the season. We overwintered some along with some carrots from last fall, and uh, we ate some, and some of the other ones went to seed too quickly for us this spring. I will be planting probably both parsnips and carrots in the greenhouse. The other thing that we did grow this summer was something from the mallow family. I 
I like okra. Mm-hmm. I like okra, whether it's steamed, boiled, raw, right. dried. It's but okay. It's, hibiscus is also in that family, but hibiscus just won't survive here. What else are we going to be dealing with that, that we did deal with this year? Uh, let's see. Asteraceae, the dairy of daisy family. You grew some sunflowers. I did. I had sunflowers. In fact, I just put the last of the dried sunflower heads um, out on the wind turbine uh, near the tower yeah right. tower so that the birds could eat them and there was already a, a jay out there pecking on them this morning uh they really enjoy those lettuce will be starting up in the greenhouse again now we, now we actually had lettuce that we used that we kept growing and we harvested until relatively late in the spring and early summer right uh what i did was i planted things that would i knew would be temperature sensitive like spinach and lettuce in the shade on the north side of the house. Which is a whole lot cooler than oh, the rest way of the cooler. yard. And it stays damper there because the the predominant wind here comes from the southwest. So the house breaks that predominant wind. So they don't get the bl- quite as much bluster. So they simply don't dry out as fast. And there's some good irrigation in that area. So the combination, and it's been well amended too. The combination really worked out well there. I had brassicas. I had the daisies, the... Uh, Lettuce. Oh, lettuce, and I also had spinach growing in the shade a good bit of the summer, and that was wonderful because we were able to have all kinds of fresh salads, and they'd be doing spinach recalls, and they'd be doing lettuce recalls, and I'm like, honey, I don't remember hearing that we had a recall. <laughs> we make bad jokes. Other than that, we have the Morning Glory family. Our sweet potato friends. Yes, well, our sweet potato friends. Well, you know, we actually had sweet potatoes that we put in two buckets that we put up near the greenhouse and we had watering problems with those. Mm -hmm. We got a very, very pitiful harvest of sweet potatoes out of those two buckets. One of the buckets definitely dried out too much at one point and then then got sogged. Right. Uh, That was my fault on the watering. The other one had some leaves and some small tubers. We replanted those those, uh, buckets and moved them down here in the yard. With new slips. With new slips and... And we grew ourselves. And we put some shade over them. Mm -hmm. We had to put a bunch of windbreaks up because we were having such horrible wind. Poor things were getting beat to death. Tomatoes, everything. Right. So we put some uh, windshades up, windscreens up, and it shaded the the sweet potatoes. And I decided they were doing so well I was not going to take it off. We weren't going to move anything. No, no. If it's not broken, don't fix it. And then... And then at the end of the season, well, getting close to the end of the season, the deer got into it and they munched all of the sweet potato leaves off of one of the buckets. One of the buckets. Rob at SA on Gardening has has talked about this too. You can eat the leaves off of sweet potatoes. And uh, they do as part uh, part of their cooking. We have tried them and they're okay, but we had so many other things we didn't really need it. So we decided not to harvest the leaves, but they do. And they found that the plants that they harvested leaves off of didn't produce very good roots. Carefully covered up the second batch so that the deer couldn't get in. I actually stuck a a stool from outside over the top of it and left it as long as we dared. And then once it had frozen, the leaves had frozen, uh, then we harvested it. We will definitely be trying that again. The, The flavor on those is just, I mean, I love sweet potatoes anyway. I could practically eat them three meals a day. But so much better. Hey, you want to talk about legumes? Uh, yeah, we actually have two more families to talk about. We have brassicas and legumes. I think we're going to have to do brassicas as a separate... <laughs> we as may, a, because that's it's a, a really big family. And for us, it's a huge family. It's where a we, huge thing. Where we grow a lot of different varieties. Now, legumes are a cool plant because they that's actually... That's a pretty good in, pun. Okay. Uh, they actually improve the soil. <laughs> and they like, for us, cooler weather. Yes, they do like cooler weather. First thing in the spring, one of the first things that goes in for us is peas. And these are shelling peas, what they call an English pea. We actually have some in the greenhouse right now. We're experimenting with seeing what will happen. They are pretty much untouched by the weather that we had in there, which was cold enough to freeze the tomatoes on the vine solid. The small ones are like half an inch. Peas we really love. That's our first thing that goes in in the spring. Last year we grew, well this year actually, 
Uh, it seems like so long ago. But this past spring, we actually grew them in... We started them in rain gutters. Rain gutters in the greenhouse. Which worked very well for getting them started. So legumes for us would be peas, snow peas, beans, field peas, peanuts, soy, fava beans, sun hemp, vetch, and clover. Yeah, we didn't grow any peanuts. No, we did not. We did not grow any peanuts. We also didn't grow any soy this year, although we have in the past. We really love edamame, which is the fresh green soybeans. Now, with fava beans, we have tried two, two or three years. years in a row now. And we got some off last year and did not like the flavor. They are susceptible to frost, much more so than, say, spring peas are. So you can't plant them safely until after frost is over. They also were very, very attractive to aphids. They were an they call aphid. Them black, they call them black fly in England, and they are a black aphid. Don't ask me where they came from. I'd never seen them here, but they came in just for the, for the fava beans. We did grow three different kinds of beans. Royal Burgundy, Carson, which is a yellow, yep, and, and, provi- and, and provider. provider, which is a green. We'll grow Carson again if we can find it. I have some. I still have Carson. Oh, good. I, I, have, I bought two packages this spring. The Royal Burgundy did well. But everything suffered from the heat. The one plant that, despite the fact that it was chewed to death by 9,000 different things, managed to produce unbelievably was Provider. Provider Provider did exceptionally well. Now, one of the things that we did have happen, that's to be fair to say on behalf of Carson, was that we had a hailstorm. Yes, we did. And The tops were broken out. And it happened at the wrong time of year. So we'll be growing, though, something for sure. Provider... For sure, and maybe a little of each of the other ones. We grew field peas for the first time this year. We had a gift of seeds from Dan Dan. at Home of the Sticks. Thank you, Dan. Those were really great peas. They really were. Uh, We got the vast majority of them. The deer got a couple around the edges, but we when once we realized what was happening, we sort of roped them off, and they could only kind of nibble off the very edges. So we got the whole center of the bed, and really enjoyed that. We were able to harvest more seed off of that. So I suspect we'll probably be planting those again. I like those. Those They were very good. good And it was kind of fun because it's what I would call a plant and leave it sort of thing. They come off, almost the entire crop comes off in about a week, week and a half. We grew three different kinds of pole beans. We grew Gita, red noodle, which are both yard long beans. Those are good. And we were extremely happy with those. That was a success. The third one that I grew, I'm totally forgetting the name of it right now. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. We've tried it before. It didn't do well here. We tried it again. We tried it again. It did better. It still didn't do well. But we didn't care for the flavor. Only thing we haven't talked about is brassicas. Brassicas. 